get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Damn right. Yes. Welcome in Daily Vikings Entertainment, Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. That's what we say every day here on the show. Phil Mackey, Judd Zolgad, Declan Goff, our executive producer. And this, boys, is a four-question Friday here. Halloween-themed on a couple of these questions Ooh. for you guys. Very yeah. scary. Spooky. And if you are watching us Very scary. on a TCL. I was, watching, I was watching horror movies. I was actually watching on my TCL TV last night. Uh, Netflix has the movies that made us series yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah, watched great. it great great stuff so good last night there's there's four new ones out the making of halloween and the making of friday the 13th are two of them and i was glued to oh, those little Voorhees, dude so great now halloween came out first in the in like 78 and then they made friday the 13th literally to, to copy the format uh of halloween and that exploded too but if you're watching on a tcl tv whether you're watching horror movies or the vikings and the cowboys on sunday they've got a new lineup of award-winning tvs delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost enjoy more of the things you love with tcl all right boys can we can we can we use this are we allowed to use this probably not probably uh, not copyright right. infringement yeah, yeah no, that's we're fine. gonna get that's we're fine. gonna get hit with that i don't yeah. want to get hit i don't want it Kill, kill, okay. kill, kill, kill. The sound nice. now, 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 now. Kirk, 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 kill, 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 kill. Sling, sling, sling. You know how they <laughs> came <laughs> how they came up with that that like whatever that song yeah. or whatever you want to call it? Not the Halloween one the Dex played, but the the kill 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 ma, ma. Yeah. So oh. they, they had the guy that put together the score for that on the the show. And he said, Yeah, I just uh, went up to a microphone and I took the first two letters of kill and the first two letters of mommy. Because it's Jason's mommy, right? That's doing the murdering. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert! In the first Friday the Thirteenth, and I just did. Oh, I kill, 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 mama! Kill, kill, mama! mama. That's oh. that's it, right there. Interesting. <laughs> oh, and that's it. Yeah, and then they oh. just like put some music under it. And, oh wow! Yeah, it's amazing. Okay. Very low budget. Very low budget. Very low All budget. right. So, in the spirit of Halloween season here, what is a crazy but also somewhat believable twist? at the end of this Viking season or after the Viking season, however you want to. Okay. What's a, what's a sort of a surprise ending? Well, I'm trying to think of it and uh, as a, a frightening end because in, in the spirit <laughs> of this, it's not going to be like a surprise. Oh, everybody's happy because why not? This isn't about being happy. Classic. This is about having the rug pulled out from under you when you least expect it. So here's the twist. The Vikings, <laughs> the love, Vikings, love it. <laughs> the Vikings starting with like the the Detroit game on December 5th, go on a win streak after after potentially not being successful in the next four games. So like typical Vikings turn things around. We showed you, we're showing you, you didn't believe, we believed, we knew in this locker room that we could do it. And then you get to January 9th when you play the Chicago Bears again. Because you always play the Bears at the end, and it always seems to be, I don't know why, in U.S. Bank Stadium, and it's a must-win because the Packers are good, and now there's a a bunch of teams in wild-card contention, and Kirk's been great. Like, Kirk continues to be great until that game, and in the fourth quarter of that game, of course, it's close. Late in the fourth quarter, Kirk is in charge of a game-winning drive. And by the way, he's probably led like three more. So like this year has been the game winning drive for Kirk. And he throws a pass to Thielen under pressure and it gets picked off and returned for a touchdown by the Bears. And the Vikings miss the playoffs. That, that is the Halloween twist. I'm going to, that's, how is that a twist? So your twist is Kirk Cousins comes up short in a big game and the Vikings finish about 500. But nobody's had like seven comeback wins. Seven comeback wins. He's had like seven comeback wins. It's horrific. They missed the playoffs. Everybody's fired. Zimmer's fired. Kirk doesn't come back. That's not a twist. That's what always happens. 
No, but this is in glorious, disastrous fashion. <laughs> I think it's in your. This is a. This, this is this is the latest. This is the 2020. Why did it, it sounds like you'd be happy if this version happened, of, which is no. Amazing. This is what that is. See, this is that. The, well, the, amu- the amount of joy you seem to get you out of Zimmer me. and Cousins Hello, failing Kirky. is disturbing yeah. to me. Hello, Kirk. Hello, Kirk. Hello, Kirk. Yeah, it's scream. Uh, I, all right, Declan. Declan, right. what's a what's a crazy but also somewhat believable twist at the end of the Vikings? That's what I gave season? you. All right, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go really spooky here, and and this is probably more on the crazier side, and and not as much believable. But I but I it's it's fun. It's Halloween weekend, and I want to get spooky, and I want to get weird. So I'm I'm gonna say this is what happens. Okay. So the Packers are basically in the driver's seat to win the North. They're in the driver's seat to win the yeah. North. Even if they go five and four the rest of the way, that still gets them to twelve wins. Probably clinches the north, right? Probably should. Yeah, for sure. That should be enough to clinch the north. Yeah. But you know what would be even spookier? You know what would be even crazier? If the Vikings rattle off nine wins over their next eleven games and they sweep the Packers. Wow. And then all of a sudden, Green Bay going five and four and just in cruise control. Here come the red hot Minnesota Vikings to be spooky and and ruin the Packers' dreams of winning the North. And then all of a sudden, it's the Vikings hosting a playoff game at Wild Card Weekend. They're not going to Lambeau. They're not going to Tampa Bay. The Vikings win nine of their next 11. And all of a sudden, the North is in the Vikings' hands. That is a twist. That is spooky. Wow. It's wow. not spooky at all. Everyone is That's all over good. the Packers right now. You know, Look what they did on the road last yeah. night, Thursday Night Football, without any wide horror. receivers. I give you guys a horror film. I'll give you one here. Again, we're looking for crazy but somewhat believable twists at the end of the season. Right now, if the playoffs started today, the Vikings would be in, and they would be playing on the road against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course, everybody, like the Buccaneers would be 10-point favorites in that game, and everybody would be, oh, it's Kirk Cousins never rises up in prime time, and Tom Brady, and this this part's accurate, Kirk Cous- or Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time, and he's just going to feast on these weak in big spot Vikings. But what if that's not what happens? You like that? You like that? What if we get the ultimate you like that moment? You like that? You like that? And the Vikings dagger the Bucks on the road with a Kirk Cousins game winning drive and a Greg Joseph game winning field goal against his old team. Wow. To advance in the playoffs. You like that? You like that? Now that would be a twist, a bunch of things that never happen, which is, well, the Vikings did win a road game against the Saints, so can't say never, but like beating the greatest quarterback of all time with a clutch kick and Kirk Cousins getting the best of Tom Brady. You just gave me that that script, which I I have right right here. So like that's the script, right? I'm crumbling it up and I'm throwing it away and rejecting your idea because it's not plausible. What would happen right now if the Buccaneers your and Vikings Greg played Joseph, in the playoff game? Your Greg Joseph thing put me, like, there is no way <laughs> Zim doesn't get that lucky. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Hello, do you want to see another kicker? Hello, Rick. I do find it funny, though, that Judd's crazy, crazy twist at the end of the season is Vikings finish 9-8 and eight and Kirk comes up short in a big Wh- game. What are... What, That's not a twist. What are the... Ho- That's literally what happens You guys all the don't time. get it. What The Halloween <laughs> franchise of films are what? Sequels. They're not new. They're not, sequels. You're Scream making up your own two. question. Halloween. No, but I'm saying I'm <laughs> fitting not the question. narrative of what we do here. We. I'm fitting the narrative. This is Vikings 8. Return <laughs> to heartbreak. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, that's hilarious. All right. All right, let's Return ask another one here. Exactly. Declan knows Halloween 12. All right. In the spirit of Halloween, again, here's question number two. What scares you the most about Sunday night football against the Cowboys? What scares me the most about this game, because I'm, I'm with Dex. I'm beginning to think that Dak Prescott's not going to play. Um, so what scares me the most is probably a twofold thing, which is Cooper Rush plays, and the Vikings take a big breath before the game, and they're like, it's Cooper Rush playing. We're in great shape here. And then to what... Phil said on Mackey and Judd, Dallas starts to run the football, and it's effective. And they're running and running and running. And Cooper Rush basically becomes a handoff machine, throws a few passes. And because of the fact that Dak didn't play 
and the Vikings were like, oh, we're going to win a third consecutive game here. They actually lose the game. It, it scares me that it would be a classic rope-a-dope because the Cowboys, mm -hmm. without Dak, will be dangerous if the Vikings continue to struggle against the run like they did in the first six games. Yeah, similar. Similar to Judd's. It's, it's Cooper Rush. Just absolutely daggering you on primetime Sunday Night Football. If, if this was at, if this was, are you guys well, serious? I don't Cooper think he's going to you. You ask what, what, what scares me and what yeah. we yeah, a spooky no, we, no. situation in the Dex theme of right. Halloween. We, yeah, he, Dex is right. This is, that is Much the like exact scenario. He's right. Getting out dueled by, by Cooper yeah. Rush. You realize what? how terrifyingly, that, 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 that could be terrifying. <laughs> I don't want to deal with yeah. the ramifications of that. They have, this Vikings team. Right, okay, do you get lost. scared when you open your fridge five times a day? Like, like what's what's sometimes scary I about the, Cooper? I, if sometimes there's milk no beer in there. there. If, if there's bad milk in there, damn right, right I do. You ever smell that crap? Yeah, it's bad. Or you overestimated? Like, oh no, I have a six pack, and then you open it, and there's nothing in there. Like, oh, my oh god. god, it's ten o'clock. I can't get to a liquor store oh my now. God, that's that, that's ah! happened to me. That's happened Four. to me. This team has lost to Chase Daniel before. Yeah, he's right. They've, they've lost Matt to Moore? Matt Moore. Matt Moore. Josh Allen. Yeah, he did. A bad Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, okay. This has you know happened. What? Bravo. Bravo. It's good. You're right. This is completely misplaced fear. All right. First of all, if Cooper Rush plays <laughs> I love in this how game. You ask the questions and then correct the question. The well, answer. I mean, no, yeah, I'm going to critique your answers. Uh, if, okay, if Cooper Rush <laughs> starts this game, it is a wrap before the game starts. Vikings roll if Cooper Rush starts this game. The Cowboys are waving the white flag in this game if Cooper Rush. This is a home game for the Vikings. The Vikings have the best pass rush in the NFL. They're going to, by the way, if Dak Prescott starts the game and he can't move, he's going to have problems. And so now he'll have a better chance to at least like throw a dime down the field, you know, off play action or something than Cooper Rush. So, so my biggest fear or what I'm most scared of in this game actually has very little to do with. The Cowboys, and it's more of a sort of a self-inflicted fear, and it's Mike Zimmer's record against winning teams. That's what I'm most scared of. Going into the season, and thanks to our friend, loyal listener, uh, Minnesota researcher on Twitter, the Vikings under Mike Zimmer are 17-39 and 39 against teams that finish the year with a winning record. If we think that the Bengals, the Cardinals, uh, and the Browns, Browns are kind of hovering around 500, but if we think those teams are going to finish above 500, that makes his record 17 and 42 against teams that finished the season with a winning record. And Dallas, no doubt, will finish. He's just, he doesn't rise up in these situations as a, as a head coach. Like, he, he doesn't prepare his team. Kirk Cousins factors into this because he's also bad against winning teams. But uh, it's, more, it's more of a Mike Zimmer fear than anything that Cooper Rush is going to do for three hours on Sunday night. Yeah, but if they can't stop the run, it's a huge, it's a massive problem. If I play. Uh, Q QB for the Cowboys. It's a massive it look like you have to stop the run and they have not proven that they can do that yet. So I think it'll be a lot easier to stop the run if Cooper Rush is the starting. It should be. Though. It should be. I mean, you could say, I mean, well, about Jared Goff? Well, Jared Goff played in the Super Bowl, right? Well, Cooper Rush hasn't played in a game. But in you're years. the one who's saying it should be a bloodbath then. And that's exactly what I don't want them to say. It will but be. That's, be. that's how you get yourself in trouble. Have you guys seen that movie Carrie? I, from you like literally the took the words out of my mouth. I was like, this is Carrie. This is yeah, the dude, movie Carrie. You guys, Cooper Rush is going to be covered in blood, in blood, as, and then as kill the us. You know what you guys are doing? Burns. <laughs> you are going, you are going into the basement and not turning the light on to check on the Halloween intruder. That's how you get killed. That's how you get killed. Declan's right. Be wary of the Rush. Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush. Mm. Hi, I'm Rush. Cooper Rush. PI. I'm going to guess that you're going to be limited, but not completely out on Halloween candy because you've made so much progress, Judd, losing weight the last few weeks, courtesy of our friends at Livia. Livia Weight Control Centers, Minnetonka is my location. There are six of them in the Twin Cities, and I want to tell you guys a little bit of story about weight loss, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody sit back and enjoy this story. A month ago, 240 pounds, lethargic, uh, jeans, 38-inch jeans, barely fit. Didn't feel great. Certainly didn't look great. Yesterday, weigh-in number four, 223, boys. On my way down to 200 pounds, 223 pounds. I can spook you and about in fact, that. When you Skinny know, jeans, Judd. Let's get it. Here, I'll get you a pair. Exactly right. And, and here's the thing. The program, it's easy. 
Livia makes this as simple as possible. It's your turn to join me now because my weight loss journey continues. As I said, 23 more pounds to go, and then I'm going to keep it off. Right now, if you join, get the first 10 weeks for free, limited time offer, and soon, Livia.com or 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, 855-GO-LIVIA or Livia, L-I-V-E-A dot com. Join me in what is a very satisfying way to fit into your clothes, feel better, and most importantly, be healthier. Great time of year to get some structure to these next couple holiday months. Also, speaking of structure, Mm -hmm. down there. Chill mm-hmm. Boys and chillboys.com. Oh, my God. Dude. I'm rocking the bamboo fabric as we speak oh, right now. What's one word to describe how Chill Boys make you feel? Oh, life changing. Life changing. Can I just briefly talk about my experience briefly. with the Long Johns? Oh, the they're long- great. Yeah, they're big. Oh, okay. So I'm used to the old school. They're sort of tight on you and they're, you know, they, they warm you up, but they're you don't really want to wear them. Chill Boys has changed my entire perception. I, I've worn them around the house with shorts on, and mm-hmm. I keep saying, I'm a basketball player yeah, now. Judd yeah. looks like Russell Westbrook now. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, at, uh, Judd, uh, oh uh, Declan, one word to describe how Chill Boys make Just you feel. B- versatility. I'm teeing off on, on Sunday. It's a, it's 11 a.m., and it's going to be 42 degrees here in Minnesota, on? and I'm going to have my long boy, my oh, long yeah, underwear dude. Chill Boys on. I'm going to be ready to go, dude. Chillboys.com. Tell them Purple Daily sent you a Minnesota-based company, but get them online at chillboys.com. Dot com. All right, question number four here. You like or three, that? Three. You three. like that? On Four Question Friday. Yeah, it's This three. is from our friend Jason Barnett on the Score North app. You can always send us feedback and questions on the Score North app. Do you guys think the dynamic would be different in Minnesota if the Vikings had actually won a Super Bowl or more, multiple Super Bowls, that they appeared in back in the 70s? So, like, in, instead of going 0 for 4, if they went, like, 2 and 2, mm-hmm. how would – Everything be different. How would our viewpoint of the team be different? How would fans' demeanors be different? Judd, you probably have the best chance to answer that question. So I feel like part of the answer is yes and part is no, and here's why. Um, I feel like there there would not – so we sort of have now a, a pre-Red Sox World Series or Cubs title um, just as a whole, as a group of woe is us, we can't get the championship – yeah. And so, yes, do I feel that there would be a different feeling? Absolutely. Nonetheless, I still contend that when Moss came here in 98, it changed things dramatically. And so do I think it would be a, a like a haughty, like, we're great? No, I don't. I Go back and look at, at the Twins. Two World Series championships, 87-91. And it's great to have those, and they're cool, but I don't feel like pe- people are like, oh, the 18-game postseason losing streak means nothing because the Twins have two World Series championships. So I think our our inferiority complex regarding the Vikings would be different. But I still think with that Moss team, they brought on a new fan dynamic, and you still wouldn't have a Super Bowl since then. So I'm not going to s- sit here and say it would be completely different. I think it would be altered in some way, shape, or form. But not to a point where it's like, well, we got championships, so who cares? Yeah, I, I almost, I think it would be. It's so hard to say because, like, for my generation and Declan's, where we're kind of like in a similar bit. I'm in my mid 30s. Declan's late 20s. Like, we've never seen them get to a Super Bowl, um, and so I think we would still feel pretty similarly. But there's something more powerful about your franchise never having won a Super Bowl, and the way that that makes you feel as a fan. And the way that it makes you grind your teeth when Packer fan cousins start bragging about, like, they always have the last word in every argument. Well, how many Super Bowls do you have? It's like, okay, we get oh, it, guy. God. We get it, Bob, from right. on Alaska. Okay, Sven. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I think we, I personally, my sports identity is tied up in not having a championship. Vikings, Timberwolves, North Stars, Wild, and Twins for 30 years, right? Thank you, Lynx. Uh, but those four men's teams are the ones that a lot of people for generations grew up. Like your grandpa watched the Vikings and whatnot. So I think it would be a lot different. And I wonder what's going to happen if and when we go on a little little Boston-like run at some point here. If we're going to get all haughty and cocky and start speaking with Boston New England accents. Right. Pock my cob by the haba. Declan, what about you? What do you think? You're the youngest guy uh, on the show. Well, <laughs> I, I kind of... 
I kind of look at it from like other teams who have gone, who haven't won a Super Bowl in a long time. Like the, like the you know the Bears haven't won a Super Bowl since what '85. It's been a long time since they haven't won a Super Bowl. Correct. Um, they've obviously been to one, but they also are devoted and diehard, and and they love their team. Um, it's it's tough because. I think, yeah, I think it plays too much into the factor of my sports fandom that I haven't even seen one of the four men's teams even get to a game. Get to the game, I should say. They've been on the doorstep. I've seen all four get to the doorstep conference championships, but I've yet to see them ever be in a Super Bowl. And I, I, I don't, so I, I can't really accurately say it'd be different because for me, in right. my lifetime, I haven't, it hasn't changed for me. And I think that's the difference. Me. Exactly. It's insane that they haven't played in the Super Bowl yep. since the 70s. It's almost but like it's. Yeah. It, it's almost impossible. You were going to say it's almost yes. impossible. Like the Bears impossible. went with Rex Grossman. Well, the Panthers went with Kerry Collins one year. Jake DeLome. And you had. Or Jake and, DeLome. And, yeah. And you, and you had at least three opportunities in conference championship games, three of them in which you somehow choked. Dude, the Patriots went before like Tom to Brady. The Patriots went with Drew Bledsoe one year in like 96 or whatever it was. Yeah, man. They played the Bears, they got blown out. Dude. Ray Barry That's was insane. their coach. So let's uh, let, let, let's get it here. All like right, final, Grogan. final question here like for that? Question Friday. You like that? Uh, we teased this one yesterday because we played the clip of Kirk Cousins bantering. In fact, do we still have that clip or did we we might have uh, taken it out it, of the? It, I think it was uh, blown out. But um, Kirk Cousins was bantering with mm. a, uh, a a Pioneer Press reporter about. He had a hooded sweatshirt that said like the Titanic Museum on it, and Kirk was like, "Oh, my family and I are going to road trip after the season." You know, should we uh, maybe swing down? And they start talking about museums and stuff. So um, if you guys are going to go road trip, mm-hmm. which uh, which museum anywhere in the United States would you be curious to go see? With Kirk, no, Maybe you bring Kirk Cousins and his family. No, he's not no, no, and I'm not going to. I, I mean, God bless museums. But I think I'm going to the, and this is going to be boring, but it's true because I've never been there. I'm going to Cooperstown. Yeah. Baseball oh, you Hall guys have. Oh, you I've guys never have never been there. Oh, wow, that's I've never too. been there, and I've heard it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's mine. It's pretty so, bad. Yes, yeah, it's very simple. I I would love to go there. I would love to see it. Um, so yeah, it's boring. Now, outside of that, look like non. It's not boring, by the way. Like it's it's well, you're no, saying the answer great. is boring. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah. museum. Um, no, I'm saying the answer is boring. Outside of sports. Been to some Smithsonian's. They're pretty cool, but mm-hmm. I don't think there's one that I would ever like purposely. Now, you wouldn't go to the Spam Museum in Austin, Minnesota. I've driven. I don't want to ever stop at that crap. Just get me home. You know, there's a no. Salt Shaker Museum you? somewhere. Yeah, no, so, I know. Yeah. Well, there's there's all of these um, there's all of these specialty. Th- uh, you know what? That's great. I'm sure people like it. That's fantastic. Have fun. Yeah, I love I, museums. I, Cooperstown's mine. Um, yeah. I, I even with the twins being the twins uh, recently, I, I have wanted to go to Cooperstown so bad. My mom grew up in D.C., so I went to D.C. a lot and saw. I've seen like most of all the staple museums and attractions in D.C. Ooh. over my lifetime. They are cool. So I've seen a, I've seen a good amount of those like multiple times. Um, but Cooperstown's number one. I I would love. I would be. I would. They would have to kick me out. Like I want. Yeah. I will be staying there till close. Dex and, and I like, would you be have there. to leave. Yep. Now I would. I would. Dex love and I it would. There. Yep. Cooperstown's amazing. So I had a chance to go to the Negro League Museum too in Kansas City. Heard that one's cool. Uh, That'd be which awesome. is right next to, I believe, the Blues Jazz Museum. Both of, are, are amazing. If the WWE ever had an actual open to the public museum, oh, that would be the dude. number one thing on my list. But they don't. Why yeah. don't they? Have, they have a warehouse of things, but they don't have an actual public museum because Vince McMahon hasn't. Oh, well, he hasn't greenlit one yet. Yes, to just somebody will do that eventually, right? Why would you oh, not? Yeah. Like, yeah, like that's uh, got to be I'm, way too much stuff not to display. Uh, uh, that's awesome. But my answer, I maybe Declan's been to this one because he's been to a bunch of museums in Washington D.C. There's an international spy museum in Washington oh, D.C. Uncover the fascinating history of spies, hear real spy stories, and even put your skills to the test using real industry tools and interactive exhibitions. You can live out all of your spy fantasies, minus you know hmm. the constant fear of death. If you want to just feel like James Bond for like two hours, that's this is you where you go. probably would That'd feel be it. the International yeah, Spy Museum. You'd like that? No, no, I don't think I mean, so. This opened in '02. Um, last time I was in DC, I think it was 2011, 2010. Um, no, I didn't go to this one. I, I've I've been to Air and Space, Holocaust, 
uh, uh, Jefferson Memorial, Lincoln Memorial, the, the the mall. I've been to a lot. The Korean one's awesome. I think the Korean Korean mm-hmm. War Memorial is my favorite one in D.C. Really? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty night, awesome. Yeah. At night, it is incredibly wow. moving and spooky. Um, yeah, I haven't been to the International Space one, though. International Inter- no, no, no. International, Sp- International Space yeah. sounds good, too. I've been, but I've I- been there. I've been there. So, Judd, but- you have no interest? Like, like, sp- like spies? You don't want to know, like... All right, who's who's out Judd there? Would hate. Interactive. Judd I, doesn't want to be interactive. I get bored. Yeah. <laughs> I I like so. Are so there a, is there a real the life Smithsonian James is cool. Bond out there? The somewhere. Smithsonian is cool because it, it's a collection of different uh, things. But spies bore me. I don't really care about spies. You know, there should be an international Surly Museum. Yeah. Well, well, it's, actually, it's right down there. There sort of is. Yeah, right by yeah, us. I guess it's called it's, it's the Brew the beer Hall. hall. Yeah, the yeah, Surly Beer Hall. It's fantastic. Um, but you know what? You are right, and here's why. Because what you could do out there is is you go buy your cans. Show us your cans. Surly show Furious us your cans. IPA. And then after you tweet us your pictures at Jay Zolget of your cans, you can donate them back to what we will build the entire Surly Museum built of. You know what? Surly cans. That's exactly right. Phil Mackey is a genius. And the only way to start this museum is this weekend. Head to your local liquor store and pick up Surly Furious IPA and start drinking it so we can build that Surly Museum. I love this idea. Uh, There's a Federated Museum down in Owatonna. (laughs) Kind of. It's like their headquarters. But uh, Federated's been around for over 100 years helping with risk management, helping business owners protect their bottom line, protect their employees, making sure you've got structure and plans in place. Go to federatedinsurance.com and click on Risk Management Corner for all kinds of great resources. And remember at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. And that's your four question Friday here on Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We are gunning for the biggest Vikings vent line of all time on Sunday night, win or lose. This just, it feels big, right? If they lose... Fire everyone if they win. Contention. Gone. Four and three. So let's let's make it the biggest Vikings vent line ever on the Purple Daily YouTube channel on Sunday night right after the game is over. You can uh, click the subscribe button now so that you can get the notifications when uh, when we go live. But we're it's the most interactive, fan friendly show in Minnesota sports, and we are jacked for this game on Sunday. So thanks for hanging out with us, Mackie, Judd, Declan. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Purple Daily.